Feel the bass drum booming in your face, son. Hello, my name is Julius Miller. I'm from the United States and I'm 24 years old. Part 36. Let's talk about languages. Question 1. Which languages are the most difficult to learn? From what I've heard, I've heard that the most difficult languages to learn are Chinese, Arabic, Russian. <laughs> Question 2. Which languages are the easiest to learn? I think supposedly the, the easiest languages to learn are the Romance languages. So Spanish, French, Italian. Question three, how many languages can you speak? Just English. <laughs> Question four, does one of your family members or friends speak a lot of languages? So most of my family members just only speak English. Actually, I think one of my aunts speaks Spanish because she lives in Florida and she has to deal with like a lot of customers for a shop. But most of my friends are from friends like from around the world. So they speak like a variety of languages. So I guess I, since I live in Korea, most of my friends speak Korean. Um, back in the States, a lot of my friends could speak Spanish, German, Italian, Portuguese. Question five, can you swear in other languages? Yes, I can, but I don't want to. <laughs> Question six. If you were to receive proposals in another language, what language would you like to receive them in? So I can't really answer this question because, well, at least in my culture, it's typically expected that the guy does the proposal and that the girl receives the proposal. So sorry, I just can't answer this question. If I, but if I were to receive the proposal, actually Spanish, I think Spanish is a very romantic language. Seven, how many languages can you say hello in? Hello, hola, bonjour, annyeonghaseyo, guten tag, bye. Question eight, what is the most romantic sounding language? Okay, <laughs> I think the most romantic sounding language, that's tough, it's either between like Spanish or French. I don't know, cause like growing up, like at least in American culture, we're used to seeing a lot of like, at least like our perception of like French, of France and like French people are that they typically are like are very romantic, like loving people. And we kind of see that like the, the way they express themselves like in movies and in pop culture. So. At least like growing up, like seeing like how French guys interact with like French girls, I feel like, I don't know, just like the way they just would like sweet talk them too. I just think like French is a very romantic sounding language. But on the other hand, I actually did study Spanish like growing up. And so I do know like when like you have a significant other and you're talking to them, it also sounds like really, really nice. So. I'm a little biased on this question, but I could either say Spanish or French. <laughs> question 10, what language do you want to learn besides English? Honestly, I really want to learn Korean. I've been living here for the past eight, nine months, and I picked up like some Korean words and phrases, but the language still eludes me. I really want to learn Korean because I'm interested in the Korean culture, specifically like K dramas and Korean new wave cinema. So I want to like learn the language so that way I don't have to rely on English subtitles. <laughs> what would you do if crazy rich people say they're actually your biological parents and ask to the and ask to cut their relationship with your with your parents? That that is tough. That's really tough because if they're my actual biological parents then they have the right to actually get to know me, want to start a relationship with me. But I can't just like, you know, cut off the relationship I had with my, with what I thought were my parents. Like that just like wouldn't be right. So if I were put in that crazy situation, I would try to come up with some sort of solution 
where I would be able to talk with my biological parents while still getting to know, keep knowing my foster parents. Like I wouldn't want to just cut out my foster parents just like that to bring my biological parents in. I would also try to like, you know, not force them to be friends, but try to make them get along with each other and see like, okay, they, we have like more in common than we don't. And if we feel like, you know what, we can actually get along for the sake of, you know, for our kid. I think most reasonable adults would want to do that for their family. I've been coming to Colcom for the past eight, nine months. And in my experience, this is the best place to come if you really want to learn Korean and make good friends while doing so. Big culture and speak better at Colcom.